Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Arnold for 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson, we take a look at the coating section and also the special feature section of the Arnold Standard Surface Shader. So coating basically on top here, it basically coats the material on top of all other layers like base color, specular, reflection, transmission, etc. and is always reflective. And you can use this coating section to create clear coat layer for car paint or a sheen layer that has a sharper specular reflection compared to the underneath layer of the skin, for example. So uh, the first parameter here, let me just actually run the active shade here. And let's set the base color for now to zero so we can actually see the effect a bit better. And also let me set the specular reflection layer roughness to something like 0.4. Now we have this rough reflection and we want to add a clear coat uh, a more sharp reflection on top. So the first parameter obviously is this clear coat weight. And if I set this to uh, one, so as you can see from this render clear coat weight basically is the amount of reflective coating on top of other shading effects. So as you can see, we have these rough reflection underneath and we have then added the clear coating with the roughness set to point 0.1 you normally probably use even a lower roughness value in this layer maybe something like 0 0.05 now the effect is quite clear you get this rough layer underneath and then a clear coat on top and this is very useful to uh, simulate something like a car paint for example or any uh, layered reflections that you might want so as you can see, without clear coat, and this is with clear coat. Now color is obviously the color of the coating layer and is normally should be white. Uh, so if I change the color, you can clearly see the effect. We have roughness, which controls how sharp or reflective you want the coating layer to be. And based on what you want to do with this layer, you can do different things. If we set this to something like, let's say 0.2, we are obviously going to get a rougher coating layer. So let's get back to 0 0.05 in this case. Uh, then we have this coat normal here. Uh, which basically affects the Fresnel blending of the coat over the base. So depending on the normal, the base will be more or less visible from a particular angle. Uses for coat normal could be a bumpy coat layer over a smoother base. Uh, this could uh, include a rain effect, a carbon fiber shader or a car paint shader where you could use different normals uh, using, for example, flakes for the coat layer and base layer. So you can define a map here. Let's just quickly do that. In this case, let's use a simple beats map. Something that can make the effect more visible. Probably something like this. And let me just increase the tiling to something like three and three. So here you can see how this map affecting the coating layer, right? Okay, let me just disconnect this again and select the material itself. Obviously we have the IOR value which controls the index of refraction for the coating layer. Right now it's at 1.5, so that's why uh, we can see the coating layer uh, even on these frontal angles, even uh, it's not that uh, reflective compared to the edges. But if I use a low IR value, like let's say 1.1, now you can see this sharp coating is only visible on the edges. So as you can see from the render, because we have a low IR value like 1.1 for the coating layer, and we have this very strong Fresnel effect where the edges are very sharp, and we are seeing the coating at the edges 
and the frontal angles like here for example are very rough because we are seeing the uh, layers underneath our coating so when you actually using a low air wall you, you are basically restricting the coating to only the edges in this case let's go to something like 1.5 Next, we have this effect underlying section. For this, let's use a base color that is a bit more. Let me set the base color value also to probably 0.8. And let's change the color. So, in the effect underlying section, we have this color and this roughness parameter. Uh, color when it's set to one basically it allows you to enable the real world behavior of coating layers in which some internal reflections happens on the inside of the coating and it can result in an enhanced and more punchier color for the overall shader so this is the render that we have with the color while you set to zero in the effect underlying section let me create a copy now if we set the color value to one you can immediately see it kind of gives us a kind of bit punchier more enhanced version maybe of this original color it really depends on you and the final look that you want right so that's with the effect underlying enabled and the color set to one and this one is set to zero here Next, we have this roughness value, which causes the coating's roughness to have an effect on the underlying layer's roughness, simulating the blurring effect of uh, kind of being seen through the top layer. Now, finally, let's create some car paint material using the coating section. And let's, I have actually created some car paint materials here before starting the lesson, just to have the um, basic color right. Okay, so to create the car paints, Obviously, uh, first you need to define the, let me come here. First, we need to define the base color. Let's start with this uh, kind of purplish pinkish color. So let me copy the base color here and go to the base color and paste it here. Now for the specular reflection color, you need the uh, now for the specular reflections color, you need a, a brighter version and a less saturated version of the base color. So let's open our specular reflection color and probably use something like this here. And in case of car paint, we need to actually increase IIR so it looks more metallic. And roughness should be about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 in this layer. Now we need to enable our clear code. So let's set the clear code value something like one. And the roughness probably something like 0 0.05 or 0 0.1 or even zero can work depending on the situation that you have. And as you can see, uh, you get this beautiful car paint shader. So here is our beautiful and nice car paint shader. Obviously we need to uh, add a bit more detail, maybe using the uh, code normal to add some flakes to the overall shader, but that's uh, enough for this lesson. And if you want to change the uh, color of the car paint, you simply need to adjust the colors here. So in this case, maybe we can copy this color and paste it here. And let's also paste it here. And just make sure. There you go. So you can create some beautiful car paint shader using the coating and obviously it can be used to create uh, other types of shaders that we have discussed in this lesson. So that's about coating and special features section of our standard surface shader. And in the next lesson, we discuss bump and displacement mapping in Arnold for 3ds Max. See you there. Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Arnold for 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out.